All right, Malcolm Stewart, uh, it's been a long time, I know, but just kind of, I guess, take me through the process of getting over the injury, getting back on the bike, and then how this year has been just kind of mentally not being able to go racing. Yeah, I mean, of course, for me, uh, nine months is a long time not to be on the motorcycle, of course. So uh, just going through that whole process, right when the knee happened, you know, I, I was so bummed. And, and then, of course, that it was contract year for me at the same time. So I was like, man, what am I going to do? There's parts of me where I was like, I, you know, this might be the end of my road, but um, once the team kind of gave me a little bit of relief and they said, hey, we're going to sign you for two more years, I think that was like, hey, the only thing we want you to do is go get your knee fixed and go, and go from there. But, um, you know, I, I guess it's, again, it's been a, it's been a long off season for me. It's not a season I kind of want, but uh, it's so far off season actually has been going good once I got back on a motorcycle. And, you know, here we are a few more weeks and then we'll be at A1. So it's, it's pretty cool, man. And, and then not only that, being surrounded by a really good group of guys, when you're highs and lows, um, I think the, the coolest thing is the guys that, that I'm surrounded with, very familiar faces, of course, Christian Craig. I grew up with him in an amateur career, so raised him a lot. RJ Hampshire, he was from Florida, so known him for, you know, for my, whole, my whole life. And then, of course, with Casey Cochran, um, known him even when he was in Florida a little bit, and he's seen a lot of familiar faces. So we always try to bounce off a, a lot of good, um, I guess I'd say anything that with the rookies and stuff, because he's, he's going to be coming in as a rookie. You know, I always try to give my best advice to anybody who's, you know, that's young and stuff like that. So, and then, of course, we have Gilliam Ferris from Spain. So, don't really know him too much, but he's a very happy kid. And he just wants to go out there and do the best he can. So, it's just cool to see um, the, the group of guys that we have. And, and, and so far, it's been going good. I know you don't like being called a veteran, as you said up there on the stage. <laughs> but, uh, I was like, easy. I know, yeah. right, easy. Um, but, you know, you, you have had a pretty long career to this point. Does it does it kind of feel like a blur in any way that you're you're at this age, in this stage of your career already, but still two more years to go at least, right? Yeah. I mean, for me, I mean, I felt like I blinked and I was one, one of the 250 championship. I was rookie, blinked, won 250 championship, blinked again. Next thing you know, I'm here, right? Yeah. So it's crazy how fast life goes and, and the highs and lows too, you know, and, and to me, it honestly felt like forever. Again, nine months, yeah, it does feel like a long time, but then also when I got on the motorcycle, it literally feels like yesterday, right? So <laughs> um, it's, it's actually, you know, I guess I would say it is, yeah, being a veteran, but at the same time, I'm also looking at all other sports to being a veteran elevated right you know athletes are a little bit older you know in the football era baseball and the whole nine yards so i think it's just cool to see the same group of guys back in our sport still racing right like the same guys that i used to play in the sandwich or in a sandwich are still racing you know i guess i guess we are pushing our early 30s but it's cool you know sometimes you don't uh, you know having some new group of guys come in there young kids you know to try to show us around but it keeps us on his toes yeah. you know so I think it's fun. Last time we saw you was, was Anaheim and it was going so well until it wasn't like you said, but uh, was it frustrating at all then that like you wanted to have another go at it and it just, you didn't get a chance to kind of prove that Anaheim one wasn't this weird situation. You can go out there and you can battle for wins. Yeah. I mean, having that happen like that, I mean, it, I mean, it cut me, it cut me deep, but at the same time when I won, I did my knee on like a Tuesday and I'll never forget. <clears throat> did my knee on Tuesday, went and saw an MRI the next day, got the results back um, later on that evening. And that's the same day my teammate at the time, Jalik Swole, broke his shoulder. Mm -hmm. And I was just sitting here, I was like so bummed to hear that on, on my side of what the MRI, MRI results. And then I found out literally like an hour later that he broke his shoulder. And I was like, okay, not to say that I, I feel worse, but I feel a little bit better because at least I had to prove something. At least I had to see something. I made it to the track. That poor guy didn't even get a chance to yeah. do nothing. So, um, you know, it's crazy how life goes like that. And, and, and just to circle back, it, it can happen any moment. But, uh, yeah, it was a little frustrating to get back to what you asked. But um, at the same time, I guess I would say, uh, you know, maybe that was a, a, you know, a gift from God. Who knows? It could have been worse. And, and that's kind of have to, the dice that we have to roll. And, and unfortunately, not only myself, but a lot of great top tier athletes kind of kind of start rolling right out right after mm -hmm. me. So um, I think it was just the luck of the draw. But um, so far, all the, every group of one of the guys that I've raced with my whole career are back healthy. Everybody, nobody quit or anything like that. And, you know, we'll be back and racing each other again around Anaheim 1. You said you got back on the bike and, and it felt 
like at home again, you felt like everything kind of came back pretty quickly. So is it exciting then seeing where you were at the beginning of last year, now you know how you feel right now and you can come back into this year and kind of test that again, right? Yeah, of course. You know, I feel like to me, it's going to be a really, really good year. Um, again, it's called racing, right? You don't never know what's going to happen, but I know it's Snow, I'm excited. I'm going to give everything I got, and I just want to I just want to be back in that stadium. I want people, I want those eyes on me. I love it, and I love being nervous. I love everything about it. I mean, I've been racing my whole life, and that's, that's I feel like that's the only thing I know. We get Jet, Hunter, and, and Justin this year as new, fresh talent, but Eli and, and you and Jason, everyone's still coming back, so it feels like this mesh of kind of worlds colliding a little bit this year. How does it feel for you though, like you said, to be in the mix of all these guys that it's maybe one of the more talented fields we've seen? Great, I actually feel really good. Actually, if anything, I feel like I'm a little bit of the underdog because, <laughs> you know, um, my career got cut so, not my career, but my season got cut so short that I felt like I, that 27 kind of faded out a little bit. So nobody really knows what I've been doing or anything like that. You know, you just hear rumors here and there. So um, to come back and, and to get back in there, I just, you know, of course, I want to prove a point, but you know, I don't don't sleep on the number twenty-seven. We're going to be back out there. Do you have any kind of goals or expectations that you have for early in the season, though, to kind of get back, get your feet wet in a little bit, and just kind of make sure things are feeling right? Nah, because I'm if, if I have that, then I feel like I'm not going to go out there and achieve what I want to do. Okay. I want to go out there and, and win the first race, and, and that's the mindset to have, you know. And I'll worry about everything else that happens. And I know if I keep that same mindset, you know, um, everything will go. And of course, you know, it's. Uh, that was the same mindset I had in 2022, and you know we ended up in the year third overall. Mm -hmm. So I think if you have that same mindset, you know, with thirds, and when I got third overall, things come right: heat race wins, podiums, and stuff like that. So keeping that same mindset, you know, I think if, at the end goal, it's going to be good. Well, I, let's start with after nations because for you guys, it was kind of a big, it was a big build up to kind of a big letdown in a way. Yeah. Um, Mentally, how did you shift past that and just kind of like put it all behind you and move forward? Yeah, it stung for a couple of days. Um, I was pretty bummed on myself just results wise, but the experience kind of outweighed that with mm -hmm. bringing my family there and then getting to see, to see all that and the fans was was worth it. So I told uh, Pelletier today that uh, you don't even have to ask me like I will go no matter what, you know, so yeah. I'd love to have a rebound year one time. But since then, yeah. Um, after a few little days of kind of reminiscing and moving on from that, it was uh, straight back to Supercross. So just been getting straight into that and probably on two months now of, yeah, the grind, they say. <laughs> Is it nice at all then that you got to off the industry, uh, off the injury, uh, dust the cobwebs off a little bit so yeah. that you could not come into this season having not raced for basically 10 months? Yeah, and that was kind of the goal was to, uh, I mean, it, I picked the biggest race, I guess, of the year to, it would have been nice to get a little gate drop, gate drop at like REM or something, you know, but <laughs> I picked the Mexican nations, but it was fun. Um, you get those jitters against it on the line in front of, I guess, a hundred thousand fans, which was wild. So, but we did it. We, um, results, besides results, we experienced it and got through it. Is that even a thing? Like, have you done a local race in like a decade? Last time was, yeah, probably REM, like uh, TLD made me do it. Made never us won, all do when, it. Never won at like Millville or something like that in the off season or something, no, something weird like that? No, no. And yeah, I'm probably not allowed to either. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, back on the bike, building towards the season and all that. You talked a little bit on the stage about trying to pick up from where you left off with the injury last year. Uh, how, how, how do you do that? Like, how do you come in as ready as you were at that yeah. point in time now? I think just take the bits that I did learn and um, yeah, I mean, it is going to be tough for sure, but I've, I've overcome a lot of little injuries, nagging ones, and then also some bigger ones. So it's kind of been this roller coaster ride in my career mm -hmm. and uh, I've had really good years and also really bad ones and just got to take what I can and, and expect it. You know, I do feel like I still have the intensity to, and the ability to be up front. So that's the biggest thing is have that fire to do that. And um, if I can get those those tools to uh, all kind of work together, there's no reason I shouldn't be up there. Like you said, you've had a, quite a few big injuries in your career. So when you come off another one like this, is the experience of the old ones, like are you, do you ever lean on that a little bit of like how I got back to the level that I was and the steps that I took to get there? Yes, yeah. I mean, especially I go back to when I broke my back in 2009. Um, I was off the bike a year, so mm -hmm. 
I kind of go back to that mentality of like, and I, I just wanted to ride a dirt bike. You know, I still have that thing is, is even when I get hurt or if I get hurt, uh, my first thing is like, all right, how fast can I come back? Like, can I make this race? Is this race in sight? Yeah. You know, and you always have that goal. Like the goal is, is happening right away. So uh, I think that says how much I love this sport and there's no end in sight. You know, I just love it too much. <laughs> um, your, your program is still Alden Baker and in Florida and all that, but uh, the start of the year, are you going to do any California program? Cause we're going to be here for a month or anything yeah. like that. Yeah. We're all going to be out here. We fly out uh, new year's Eve and bring in the whole family. We did that last, the last two years, we get an Airbnb yeah. over by Angel Stadium and then uh, stay s almost six weeks. So once it kind of goes more East Coast, mm -hmm. we'll do that. I know the first couple of rounds are a little bit, uh, I think the Detroit's kind of like in between there, but um, yeah, we'll do that, hang out here with the, with the team and obviously probably be some testing and fine tuning until we get back to Florida, but here for this week and then back to Florida till then, so. With the, you made it, I think, 11 rounds into the season, so you got to do, you got to do quite a few East Coast rounds yeah. and West Coast rounds last year. Did you feel that you found a good middle ground with the bike and the way that the chassis worked and everything on both kind of settings? Yeah, I did. And um, we're in a total different spec now. It's yeah. pretty crazy how far this bike has come and the, the stuff that they've kind of given us. And to see all, I guess, all four of us on kind of a similar setup, it shows like, it, how good it is now so um i'm happy with it it's crazy how uh, much more comfortable i'm at this time like last year at this time i was unsure of you know kind of what mm -hmm. what to choose what kind of clamps to choose what what shock linkage there was just so much and um i've, I've gotten more comfortable with it and it's it's been a big big help i didn't know if you're allowed to talk about the new new spec much or anything no like i that. mean I've heard people are saying new frame, but I, I've been on the same frame. Yeah. So um, whenever I get offered to test something, I always try it yeah. and we'll see. <laughs> uh, so expectations wise, are you kind of basing where you were at the, you know, when you got injured last year is like the, the minimum, I guess, or is there a, a, a set framework that you've laid for yourself that you want to hit these check marks to start the season? Yeah, I always write a, I've got a big whiteboard in my room that I set goals on, um, kind of my main goals and then what it's going to take to to get those um, and you know one of them is to, to lots of hole shots I want to put myself up front I mean that's probably number one thing is if I can do that then the rest of my goals are going to click into place mm -hmm. you know so and then another one is, is to make every race and I think that's really hard to do right now with mm -hmm. 31 races I think only what two people did it or maybe even I think one. only Freddie actually did all one person made every single round so pretty crazy but that is a goal of mine and um i did it in 2022 so there's no reason i can't and um obviously be up front and, and battle for uh top five cool i'm gonna throw you a curveball she asked chat gpt a question oh for you're doing you. this with everybody no just to you because oh. you're my favorite <laughs> <laughs> okay so what specific mental and physical preparations do you prioritize in the days leading up to a1 and how do you maintain focus and composure during the intense moments on the track? So leading up to A1, I would say like focus is staying healthy, eating well, um, getting in your motos. So like those are the three big things, mm -hmm. not missing riding days. And then on the track would be have a positive attitude always um believe in yourself is probably the biggest thing actually um believe in myself and then yeah just trust trust and and know that i've been there um know that i i know what it takes to to win a supercross so why not do it again